Virus Total said this thing was a Bitcoin miner. How many people mine Bitcoins in here? Nobody? A few people? B Bitcoin is this currency system that is kind of open right now. Everybody can go generate their own coins by performing these complex hash algorithms on your hardware, your CPUs or your GPUs. The malware was still active. Even though they terminated that process, there was still a something active, so they couldn't run auto runs. So they opened the registry and went to current version run where they were hoping they'd find something, and sure enough, they found this sitting here. Uh, something sitting inside of app data roaming SysTweak, something called Tweaker, which isn't, it, again, it sounds potentially legitimate. They deleted this auto start location, and the problem was solved. I've got an example of a real Bitcoin miner piece of malware. It's called Vicenor. Vicenor. And where is Vicenor? And if we go take a look at the Microsoft report for Vicenor, it says it's a, a family of Trojans that use your computer without your consent to generate a specific digital currency known as bitcoins. What malware authors are doing now, instead of taking you ransom and making you pay something, they're using your computer to generate money for themselves. Because anybody can go generate these bitcoins and all you have to do is configure what bitcoin to count the GPU usage should be counted towards. And so the malware downloads on your computer, connects to their bitcoin account and starts generating coins for themselves. So big botnets now are enlisted in the, for the task of generating money for these guys. This Vicenor Unfortunately, it's a GPU-based miner, so we're not going to see it consume the CPU, and I don't have a GPU sitting inside this virtual machine, but here it is, and what it's going to launch as a child process is the miner D process. This miner is the miner process for bit Bitcoin. And if we take a look at miner D, its command line options, you'll see that here's the Bitcoin account, I spilled soda dot ru is what this goes to. So I go to, I, don't, I haven't been to I spilled soda dot ru dot I spilled soda dot ru. Uh, and apparently that is not active anymore, although it has been found in other pieces of malware. Your threat expert says that they've seen this account being used. Now, what is the account password here? You can see that the password is X, and the username is therefz.1. So if we wanted to, and that account was still active, we'd have access to that Bitcoin account. Unfortunately, we don't. But, but this is a standard piece of, of uh, Bitcoin malware. There's, uh, the reason that I don't see activity, like I said, is this is GPU-based miner but there's also CPU-based miners, so what you'll see is now, even on systems without high-performance GPUs, that bit Bitcoin mining can be done on those GPUs. Of course, it's a lot less efficient. But when they're using your computer and not theirs, eh, that's okay. I'm gonna get this thing ready to go while I come back. And talk about another case and this one is the case of the unexpected FTP connection. So this case actually came into Microsoft support. This was a, a corporate customer. They customer detected through some of their network monitoring that a particular server, which was an exchange server, was making outbound FTP connections. Now that's not suspicious, is it? Forefront, to put, make matters worth, Worse, after they detected these outbound FTP connections, they went and looked at their antivirus logs and saw that Forefront Endpoint Protection had cleaned some malware off the machine. But the thing was still making outbound FTP connections. So they had a problem on their hands. What support had them do was capture a process monitor trace, Let's take a, and then send it into support. Let's take a look at that trace and how support figured out what was going on. The first thing they did was said, okay, so we've got potential outbound FTP. Let's take a look at the process tree and see if there's any processes that might be 
generating outbound FTP. Anything that looks like it could potentially do FTP activity. Anything. Do you see anything that looks like it could be FTP? <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's an FTP right there. Now they look at the command line for FTP, which I can uh, do right here. And they'll see that FTP, what it's doing, this dash I or this dash S, says go execute this script. And the script that this thing is executing is called J. What is J, they wanted to know. And where is J, where can I look at it to see if this thing is really, you know, something malicious, maybe this will give us a clue. So what they did was set an uh, include filter for this and then search this trace for J. And you can see this creating J in a particular directory called I98292. You can see it reading J right here. It's a 58 byte file. So they had the customer go look to see if J was there and J is not there. So no evidence left behind of what the script is doing. Whether it, it might be part of some piece of software, legitimate software they got on the machine, who knows. So they went back to look at what launched the FTP process. Let's go take a look at its parent process. So the parent process of this FTP is this command prompt. And we take a look at this command prompt's command line and you can see that it's launching another command prompt which is then creating a directory, I, a different name because we picked a different one, I9925, changing directory into that, deleting anything that's in there, then starting to echo stuff out to J. Let's see what it echoes out to J. So I'm going to copy the this command prompt, this command, uh, command line here, and what I can do whoops, is I'm doing F3s and just pressing return to replace those with re carriage returns. And now you can see the first line, open up J, uh, pipe an open command, obviously aimed at FTP, into J. That's the URL that it's going to connect to. Creates a new connection, sets the binary mode, does a get of all the executables off the FTP server, deletes J, and then for every file that it downloaded, goes and runs, uh, sticks them in a bat, uh, pipes it to a bat, uh, output to a bat file and launches them all. And then deletes the outputs of the, ba uh, the batch files after it launches the batch files. So the, this is obviously just aimed at just downloading whatever the botnet herder wants to put on their FTP server so that this machine now pulls down the malware and executes it. What is this thing? If we do a, a lookup for this, there's a sys internal tool called whois that will conveniently do lookups for you. And this thing is in, it's my house. No, it's not. It's not my house. <laughs> I do happen to live in Bellevue. But the reason that we're seeing Bellevue is that there's a company there called whois privacy protection that is protecting the true owner of that, UR, uh, that domain name. So we can't, we've got a, a dead end there. So what the, admin, what the uh, support person did is go back to the trace and say, all right, what is this thing connecting out to? Process monitor, besides catching file system and registry activities, also captures network activity. So if I disable file system and registry, or filter file system and registry output out of the trace, what we're going to be left with is all of the network traffic that this exchange server is performing. And if we scroll through this, we can see that it looks like legitimate traffic for the exchange server, but then we're starting, to, we see here batches in between of random URLs well, this 105, 